D&D Beyond now fits in the palm of your hand with the free D&D Beyond app. It's the perfect tool set for beginners, regular players, and seasoned dungeon masters. Play faster with the guided character creator and access your character sheets, spells, and abilities wherever you go. All of your adventures and source books are at your fingertips, even when you're offline. Easily find and access the rules you need when you need them. With more features to come, download the free D&D Beyond app today. Welcome to our D&D Beyond Dev Update. Uh, I'm Joe, that's Melly. I'm super stoked. We have a new creative team, and um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, uh, bring them both up now so you can meet them. Uh, I'd like you guys to meet us. Uh, stepping in um, as our uh, uh, you'll see him more on the on the editorial side on the D and D website. Michael Galvis uh, is joining our team, and uh, joining us more on the video side. You'll see her hosting. You'll see her interviewing. You'll see her hanging out with me on camera. Amy Dallin uh, is officially joining uh, the D and D Beyond and Phantom Tabletop team. Hey, you guys. Hey, Michael. What's up, man? Uh, hey, Joe. Um, so did not know part of the job would be that I would lose my physical body and be digitized to the Internet. So now here I am. Read the paperwork. The These mm -hmm. are the bonuses, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Yes, the perks are to uh, uh, tell you last minute that you have to come on the Internet and talk to strangers. That's one of the perks of the <laughs> job, it's, Michael. Yeah, it's terrifying. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Amy, hello. I'm super stoked to have you. Hi, I am very, very excited to be here. And Michael, yeah, there were there were a lot of documents you gotta go through to the back pages, to the appendix mm -hmm. of the appendix, and that is where we just live in the tubes now. The series of tubes. Yeah, it's the section that is in Infernal. Yeah. Oh. Wait till you see the appendix about your appendix. Because uh, <laughs> if you've still got one, you don't for long, baby. Um, I am Absolutely thrilled to be here and to be joining this awesome team in this place, which obviously we've all been using D&D Beyond for years, so this is going to make my life significantly more convenient. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be coming into a space where so many of my favorite people have made awesome stuff, and I hope we get to carry that forward uh, in the big D&D family that I love so dearly. Okay, that was it. That was my... <laughs> no, I think I think we do. If you guys have already been digging articles uh, uh, the past, uh, like, two weeks, uh, if you didn't like them before two weeks, uh, after two weeks ago, that's on me. Uh, but if you're, like, two weeks ago, you were like, the quality change has gotten really solid. That's because Michael is, uh, is behind the wheel in there. He's editing. Uh, he's making things happen. He's making all of these articles super smooth. Uh, these two uh, are not the only voices you know these four are not the only voices you're going to see here in the company we're just sort of like driving the car right uh we i think dd is for everyone and there are a million ways to talk about it and a million different thoughts on it and a million different people that we want to have joining us here uh so you're going to be seeing a lot of that extended family uh all the time that is an absolute uh promise uh from us over here that said let's get into uh let's get into some goofiness amy I decided uh, uh, five minutes before this show that uh, I needed you to build an ideal D&D &D character um, so that we could use it as a way uh, to meet you and learn a little bit about you. Um, so walk us through uh, your, uh, just take like a minute, you know, just broad overview. Uh, tell us, tell us about your D&D &D character. Hi, uh, her name is Lim and she is going to see and understand the world. You said ideal level five character. And the truth is that for me, ideal characters are the ones that I haven't ever tried yet. And I have never played a turtle. So Lim is uh, a little on the older side for a turtle. She's 40, you know, but turtles, the thing about turtles is we just want to see the world. Uh, and this is True total facts, the wanderlust that hits them is just too compelling. Uh, it's the perfect setup for any role player to go out and explore the world. Uh, so she is going to go out and explore the world. And uh, I chose... Okay, look, I'm not... I may or may not be super useful in a fight, you know? Uh, I deal need something different to everyone. If I were a fighter, I'd have my second attack by now. That would be great. Uh, but I've never played an inquisitive rogue. Uh, and I love that the inquisitive rogue exists. Uh, and the Inquisitive Rogue exists, and I am, of course, um, an anthropologist. 
So I will use my anthropology background, uh, my inquisitive rogue, and I gave myself the observant feet just to really gild the lily uh, on Lim the turtle, the turtle inquisitive rogue who is out to see and learn about and catalog the world before she settles down to make a ton of turtle babies who will pass on to the next generation. I love that. I love Lim. Uh, I feel like I got a huge insight into Amy by learning a little bit about Lim. Michael, introduce us to your character. Sure thing. So I actually tried out a couple builds. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of different builds that I've theory crafted over the years. But I decided to stick with uh, my tried and true friend, Hamill Spitztu. So he's a character that I play in a Tuesday group uh, with some really good friends. I think we've been playing for two years now. So uh, Hamill is just, just the most lovable, most anxious little creature that you will ever meet. So he is a, uh, so he's actually a multi-class. So he's a sorcerer for Bard One. Um, I really love my sorcerers. I love metamagic. So he's got the uh, quickened and the twinned metamagic. So, uh, and I, I, I opted for the divine soul sorcerer because how awesome is it that you get to access the sorcerer spell list at, on top of the cleric spell list? So for his spells, um, oh my gosh, I need to stop talking characters. So, <clears throat> all right, hold on. All right. No, I love, I feel like, look, uh, optimization and yeah, no, we got, uh, and the fact that you, I think rolled up four before, <laughs> before you were like, you know what, let's just use the one that I love already. Uh, uh, I think we get a lot of Michael out of that. And uh, Melly, who are you? Who's your character? I yeah, I had a similar feeling as Michael. I rolled up a couple different characters last night. And then this morning I changed my mind and I just picked a character that I've been playing quite a bit in a home game, Lisa Lith, who I love, love, love. She's a high elf wizard. And I love homebrew a lot. I love to make it. Uh, I've got stuff on DMs Guild. I love to buy stuff on DMs Guild. I love getting third party stuff. I'm a homebrew subclass by Sterling Vermin, which is the three spirit adept, which is a familiar centered wizard. So you get like a uh, multiple familiars and some extra stuff you can do with them. Uh, so in this case, her familiars are like aspects of her uh, self. So it's like her present, past, and future selves. There's a bit of a Christmas Carol thing going on with her. Uh, and I love to customize everything. So like all of my spell names and how I cast them are very specific. Uh, and as we progress in the campaign and I've learned spells through it, they're very much influenced by the other party members. Uh, and I just, I love customizing things and making things really special in every campaign that I'm in and every situation that I'm in is just like, how can I make this personal to this person I'm with or these people I'm playing with? So that's kind of how I pick the character. I love that. I absolutely love that. And I'm also like just a super true believer of uh, if you really want to get to know someone, if you really want to like learn how to work together with someone, um, you you play D&D &D with them, right? And so that's why I love this game. So anyway, Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. You've traveled to the ancient town of Nylanor, a simple enough township built upon ancient elven ruins. In the same way that England was built around old Roman fortifications and temples and homes, so does Nylanor exist on the bones of the civilization that ruled here years ago. It's, it's a rest stop town uh, along the highway. It's a lively safe haven for travelers to rest and regroup and to plan their next move. Tonight is their autumn harvest celebration. Even as the road leads you to the first few small farms outside of the town walls proper, you're reeled in by the haunting promise of fresh baked goods, pumpkin cream and cranberry meads. These smells just wafting through the air and almost just like pulling you into the town. The sounds of the festivities reach your ears as the walls and the guardhouse begin to take shape in the, in the, in the distance. Uh, just this commotion of joy and uh, revelry. Uh, on the road in your approach to the town, uh, what would the three of you like to do? Oh, uh, instantly smelling all, all these foods just like wafting over. It's just, it's, well, I hope I, they have some meat pie. I, um, I do like my desserts, of course, but oh, you know, cranberry, oh, with apple. I don't know. I just don't know which one to pick. Oh, my goodness. 
It's customary at these festivals, I believe, to sample a wide variety. So you'll really be doing a favor to the people of this town if you partake fully in as many of the offerings as you can. Uh, Louisa, that's exactly what she's already doing. She's running in, trying to like stop at every stand, trying to find games to play. She loves just seeing new things because she's not used to it. So as just in the moment that she sort of starts to sprint forward from the rest of the party, Lim, uh, your passive perception is pretty hard and you start to realize that like the sounds that you're hearing from the town are not necessarily like joyful and, and excited and, and revelry. You're, you're hearing a lot of just like angry commotion uh, from inside uh, the walls of the town. Oh, a caution, uh, a caution as, oh, oh, uh, Hmm. Something is a little wrong. And uh, let's uh, leave it up to you if you want to uh, 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 heed that or not. Um, I feel like she's already like at a stand, has like, you know, fair food that she's oh, no. in the middle of biting oh. into. Like, what? Amazing. So, uh, Lisa, you just like run through the town. There's no guards posted or anything like that. Uh, it is, after all, the harvest. You run to the first um, little uh, food wagon uh, that you see where uh, uh, someone has been baking turkey legs uh, all day just on an open fire. They're not there right now, but the turkey legs are there. So you just literally like pick up a turkey leg and like as you're like, as a turkey leg like meets your mouth, your eye line uh, moves forward and you just see this huge crowd of people uh, around the banquet hall that is in the center of the town. Everyone's around it. Uh, there's a rage stage, a uh, raised stage in front where a very well-dressed, very finely dressed halfling gentleman is trying to calm down this, uh, this, this big crowd of locals who are just angrily shouting and frustrated. And you, you see that this man just like, okay, <laughs> calm, everyone calm down. I, I, I promise uh, a, solution, uh, a solution will present itself and, and the harvest will continue. Let us in, Hamel, come, come this way. I think we'd better catch up. Oh, oh okay. So as the, and uh, Hamel another turkey leg, because I grabbed one for him. Oh, no, 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 we can't. We, we haven't paid for this. It's, I don't want to go to jail right now. <laughs> I mean, I just got out oh, of jail. I'll, I'll dispense the appropriate currency. You got out of where? Uh, oh, nothing. Oh, what was that, a turkey leg? <laughs> it, 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 this would really benefit from a little bit of rosemary, honestly. Um, uh, as you, uh, as, uh, uh, Lim, did you just put money, like, the appropriate amount the of money? Okay, great. As you put it in the counter, your, like, eyeline kind of goes up. There's this very large, like, six foot six, just, like, sunbaked, like, permanently sunbaked, uh, woman, uh, uh, she's uh, clearly a, looks like a farmer, but also like if you smashed a gladiator and a farmer together somehow, um, uh, just has this like huge quarter staff that might as well be the trunk of a, of a smaller tree. And she just kind of like gives you like an approving nod at, because she's just been like uh, just mean mugging uh, uh, Lisa Liff, uh, gives, uh, gives Lim an approving nod. And then uh, when Hamill mentions the rosemary just kind of goes, I didn't mean any offense, of course. I, I mean, it's perfectly normal to use oregano and a bit of thyme, but, you know, it just, I, I do like the sweetness and the, the fragrance of, of rosemary, so I, I do. Um, the joy of seeing the world is that customs are different in custom, different places, and perhaps rosemary is not quite the thing here. Uh, well, Matt, what, what, what is going on over there? And I point at the, the stage. Uh, as you point over, uh, uh, Hamill, will you uh, uh, roll uh, your persuasion? Oh boy, hey, I'm pretty good at that. Oh, and it's a natural one. Great way to start <laughs> things off. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, you, you, but I mean, you, a bit of you salt. Present, you present First your recipe roll pitch. of the new job. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> This does not forebode well. Um, uh, suddenly there's just a 404 error on D&D &D Beyond for the next <laughs> month. Um, uh, yeah, you sort of like give your your uh, your recipe uh, upgrade spiel and she just like very, not, doesn't really move. She just reaches over and like takes the turkey leg from your mouth 
and just pulls it away. Like there's nothing, you're like a, it's like if someone's picking up a puppy, there's really just like nothing you can do. She's just very strong and just takes this uh, this turkey leg away from you. Um, Lim, as you are saying, oh, what's going on um, over there? Uh, as you point, uh, you realize that the well-dressed halfling on the raised stage is pointing directly at you and is just saying, see, a solution, a solution presents itself. Please, 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 see everyone go back to the fair, enjoy yourselves. Your mayor has this all well in hand. And he um, very carefully uh, climbs down off of the raised stage and uh, just is sort of like hustling towards you guys. Um, you know, just like running, you know, through the hay and, um, uh, you know, running past all the like the hanging lanterns that have been set up for this festival. And uh, he's actually like holding a roasted corn cob that uh, he must have been in the middle of when whatever it was started. And he just really like hasn't put it down yet, but he's kind of like gesturing with this roasted corn cob. And it's just like, ah, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness you're all here. Ah, hello, hello, hello. Uh, 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 Franklin Gillyboats uh, at your service. I'm the mayor. I, I, I'm the mayor of Nylanor. Uh, welcome, welcome friends. Um, welcome to our autumn harvest. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it's, it's, it's a little uh, uh, different. Uh, than it uh, typically would be. We're having a little issue with an unwelcome guest in our banquet hall, and he's not letting anyone inside. It's a little ridiculous to not be able to have the banquet hall uh, for our autumn harvest. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, well, ha have you told them to leave? I mean, you have guards. There are laws, so they should just leave, right? Don't get arrested. <laughs> They're, they don't seem to be uh, very amenable to leaving or being arrested. So uh, we might just need like a little, I mean, it shouldn't be a big deal. You look like the, the types that have dealt with, uh, with uh, uh, mm, uh, ruffians before. Yes, see, uh, up. that's Stick what I like to see. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, 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 a halfling with bulging, bulging veins and, and, and biceps, just like me. And he kind of like does it back and just not really... Uh, uh, what, the, the the tailoring really sort of uh, hides a, a lot of it. I like to, I like to pre to present his lie. Oh, I think we should do it. I, I mean, halflings you, you can trust any halfling that you meet. Just look at me. <laughs> That's just science. Is that anybody? Right? Please live. <laughs> well, I I I, suppose, I just to make sure, Mayor. You have you been to prison before? I'm just trying to sort of establish. How I should feel about halflings in general. Well, I'm the mayor. I, mayors don't go to prison. I mean, I mean, not that I've ever done anything that requires it's me to go to prison. It's been to and I start shuffling for books in my bag. <laughs> halfling uh, society, uh, halfling history, halfling geography. Um, I'm just loading these up. Like they, these will help to give you some broader context. Very excited about these books, so I'm very into that. Um, great, so I'll just study these books and then we should be able to help you, maybe, I, depending in on- In the meantime, um, I, I, maybe the studying can happen later so that you could remove this scoundrel and, and we can get on with our harvest. We'll happily uh, pay you. Are you hungry? And he takes the turkey leg that uh, the farmer um, took from Hamel and hands it uh, to Lim. You know, smallest and I turn to my, been... so, sorry? The, the smallest bites have been taken out of the turkey leg. <laughs> yeah. uh, I look at the nibbles, I look around and I look at my companions. You know, as much as I would like to make a thorough study of the questions at hand, I would like to see this festival. Perhaps we could see if we can aid them and in turn, they'll share even more of their customs with us. Oh, yeah, plenty of customs here, uh, including uh, the hero of the harvest. That's that's one of our our joyful customs. Uh, one almost every year for the past five years by Marta here, and uh, he he uh, he gestures up to the farmer, and she just kind of gives you a nod, like, "What say you? Let's do it. We could, we could talk to them, and maybe they'll answer to reason." Absolutely. They seem very reasonable. Nothing more than a, than a common bandit in there. I promise you nothing more than that. And he's like dragging uh, Hamel almost like by the wrist and just trying to like pull you guys towards uh, the banquet hall. 
Can I very quickly insight check Common Bandit as we go? You absolutely can. Uh, you know, it's a nine. <laughs> a nine. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Rolling, guys. Um, so you you can't you you get the idea that he's very like kind of stressed out. You, but you also you have a hard time sort of getting a bead on how honest he's being. And it's maybe clouded by the fact that like, maybe he doesn't have a good gauge for um, how dangerous things might be, but you, you, yeah. Uh, but he, he's definitely sweating and, uh, and uh, you can definitely tell. We've committed, so. You did commit. Lead, lead the way. And I'm just going to cast mage armor on myself uh, or protego, I guess as I call it. Okay, great. I'm squishy. You are. You are just like a little uh, squishy. Okay, so uh, the three of you uh, uh, head into the um, to the banquet hall. Great. Yeah. So the ba the banquet hall is actually um, this very sort of like old, like quite beautiful elven ruin, uh, right? So it's actually a very spectacular looking building. Kind of think wood elf. Um, so really sort of like woven into these like beautiful living trees that were sort of like woven together to almost give the uh, the idea of like a living log cabin, uh, if you will. And as you enter, it's just this big open hall. Uh, straw lines the floor. There's lots of long tables. There's a raised stage, a raised stage uh, scattered with instruments where, uh, where a, a band clearly like left um, in a hurry. Uh, there's garlands everywhere, uh, piles of pumpkins and hay bales, um, every, you know, everything that you would expect to see at, at, a, at a fall harvest festival. Um, and then uh, at the end of the room, um, uh, there's a big, uh, there's a big, like, very, like, homey looking uh, sort of, um, the, uh, the retirees of the town got together and built this, like, ages ago, and it gets brought out once a year. Uh, just like big throne and it's on a big stack of hay bales um, and on that throne is what looks to be uh, there's like a very like spindly uh, humanoid figure uh, sitting on the throne it does not move what's it seem to be made out of would you please roll uh, an investigation check I would love to how about a 24? Uh, I'll take it. Uh, oh, the vision on these portals. Um, uh, so uh, as you uh, look at it, it's it, at first glance, it's, it's uh, a man, uh, a, a human man. But then as you are uh, looking at him, you notice his, his arms and his legs are a little too long. Uh, his skin looks very like rough and strange and it almost looks seems like it's like the texture uh, of something between flesh and corn husk um you see bits of uh hay uh stuffed out of uh his sleeves and uh, in different like patches um in his clothes and as you're sort of uh starting to really like investigate this bizarre sort of like scarecrow looking uh fall homunculus of a man his head just kind of goes and he uh looks up and uh, sees you and and says, who disturbs the hero of the harvest? No one, N no one. Well, I believe you may be claiming that title a bit early, good sir. Uh, the title is um, uh, uh, the. Title is yours, I think yeah. I think that he's made himself very clear and that we should we should probably just communicate that to the mayor and you know we've cleared it all up. This is the a year of the harvest. Challenge and has been met. And his first long leg sort of stretches out, uh passed down the hay bales onto the ground. His second long leg stretches out down to the hay and he sort of like pulled his chest first, pulls himself up. Uh, to a standing position. Uh, and would everyone uh, like to roll for initiative? Oh my I would God, not I like to. I expect us to be playing <laughs> D&D today. 
Nothing like a little D&D before 10 a.m. to really just wake yeah. you up. Uh, I rolled trash. I got a 10. Oh, I got a one. <laughs> <laughs> like right. it's a four, but it's a one. Hamel? I got an 18. Ooh, you got an 18. Not bad. Not bad. Let me roll initiative for our friend here. Oh, fortunately, he did not roll well. Um, okay. Let's do this. Hamel, you're up first. What would you like to do? Um, well, first off, I'm going to cower a little bit because this guy is terrifying. Uh, I'd be like, oh, I shouldn't have come here. Oh, God. Jail was so much better than this. Okay. I'm going to keep my eyes closed as I fire a guiding bolt in his direction. Perfect. Go ahead and roll. So I believe this will be at disadvantage uh, since I'm technically blinded. Oh, here we go. Did it roll for you? I sure hope so. There we go. There's my game log. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. 15. I three times in? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay, so uh, 15, uh, 15 hits. Right. Let's roll some damage. Let's do it. That is two sixes Ooh. and two threes. 18. Very nice. Okay. So that guiding bolt, like as soon as like the thing steps up, uh, you're like, ah, and you just reach and fire off this guiding bolt. It hits it square um, in the chest and it, uh, it uh, hits backwards against the throne. Uh, its knees sort of do like this 90 degree angle. And then after a moment, uh, um, I, for those uh, with the passive, with like a perception that's high enough, you sort of hear uh, what's is kind of like the sound of um, like grain and rice being poured out of a bag uh, onto a surface. Uh, you can kind of just hear it's like very quiet, but then it just kind of goes and uh, stands back up and it's unhappy. Um, and that brings us uh, to uh, Lisa Lith. Oh boy. Um, and was yeah. it Lisa Lith or Liza Lith? Lisa Lith, it's Lisa Lith. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that she just immediate, it, it's a fear thing for her. She's gonna pull out, she has a broom of flying uh, that she got uh, in her, the campaign she's from. And she is going <laughs> to move her wand over herself and cast a spell called Tempest Espectra, which is mirror image. So there's just three more of hers, there's four of her now that just lift off the ground, trying to just create distance between her and this horrifying hero of the harvest. And that's gonna be her turn. Okay, so uh, yeah, these, uh, these, these copies of you arrive, uh, I'm assuming they're flying uh, on, on their brooms. So also uh, these, uh, these three, sh and it's, it's definitely distracted. I almost got too excited and knocked the lamp over. Um, uh, uh, my wife told me not to put it there. I didn't listen um, and here we are. Um, and so uh, these these these, uh, these copies of your play, and it's definitely worked. It's definitely like kind of like looking around and and uh, very distracted. Uh, and because of that distraction, actually, no, hang on, it's not Lim's turn because Lim rolled a one. Um, <laughs> uh, it is uh, the creature's turn, and uh, oh boy, what are we gonna do? Um, seeing all of a sudden, sort of like seeing that it's outnumbered, um, six to one. Uh, it's it just sort of like lets out this like angry just kind of like and like this like horrible like sound fills the hall that's not good for my throat this early in the morning but here we are um and it starts to like sort of like writhe and stretch and uh and move um uh and as it's doing that it starts to sort of like rush forward and it is going to let's see here how do i want to do this. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's so it, it closes distance and it's going to um, take a swing at uh, Lim, who is sort of our one person who hasn't made like a tactical move uh, to get away uh, from it yet. Uh, so uh, it's like weird scarecrowy arm like swings and as it swings, the momentum almost like makes it longer uh, a little bit. Uh, so it just stretches out of like this in this five foot arc 
and it rolls a 21. Oh, <laughs> tragically, that will hit, uh, although I would love to use my uncanny dodge uh, to see if I can just turtle sneak my way out of the way of that one. As you should. Uh, 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 let's roll. Hang on. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry, need to open a second window so I can look at you. Please lift. I love your spell names. I'm so excited. Side note. Yeah. I love. Yes, I love that. Uh, uh, you made them all custom. It's amazing. Okay, cool. So, um. Yeah, we're gonna say, let's see here. Yeah, Uncanny Dodge works. So limbs like sort of like head just like drops uh, in shell uh, really Not quick. Not fully this... using the move in shell, but for flavor, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and it just, and it just kind of goes and uh, uh, it stretches over. And you actually start to feel all this like, to go, like, like pieces of hay and grain are actually like falling onto your head and shell and shoulders uh, and it's gross. Um, after it takes that big swing, uh, the arm, instead of like returning to where it is, actually uh, sort of goes and sort of straightens out and plants itself uh, onto the ground um, around the rest of you. And now you can see uh, the monster that I'm just sort of flavoring as a weird scarecrow creature. Uh, and it starts to grow um, six other arms uh, uh, that start to like sprout out in different uh, areas of its body. And it's... Uh, head like the mouth starts to open like really wide and this big orange like spherical like shape starts to pour out of it until it's almost like popped up this giant um uh uh, uh pumpkin shaped like spider jack-o'-lantern face head and a weird uh uh horrible autumn harvest uh spider monster uh uh <laughs> hits the ground in front of you uh which brings us to limb uh, I should have still a half damage from whatever that was. I think I forgot to ask how much to mark down there. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, let's find out. Tragically. So uh, 27 uh, divided by two. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that, hit. that hit hard. <laughs> it sure did. Uh... So Liv is uh, uh, rocked a little bit, um, but this, so the spider creature is, n is it still distracted by Melly or not because it just was focused on me? Yeah, it's definitely now just sort of like waving its way. It's like looking around and, uh, and sort of uh, arms and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and stuff are sort of like waving uh, uh, uselessly uh, at these copies. Um, and is it melee, ra melee range with me or is it uh, like, it I guess it must be because it just took a swipe at me. Mm -hmm. I This is living dangerously, but I kind of want to ready in action. Um, I kind of want to just go ahead and uh, ready my short sword for uh, the second that uh, one of you makes an attack on it in the hopes that that will somehow uh, be a good moment. Um, so it. I'm going to gather my strength um, and, and try to look uh, in, inobtrusive, but uh, get that sword out. Yes, just like uh, Lim, just heroically like trying to to look strong and unshook, uh, uh, preps herself, and that brings us back to Hamill. Or is the, is the creature in melee range of me? Uh, I'm going to say yes. There at this point now, there's sort of legs like everywhere ish. Um, so um, yes, and also for the sake of we've got nine minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Hamill's just gonna like run uh he is terrified i'm i'm not gonna like dash or dodge or anything like that on them just gonna move away and just turn my back on them just go <gasps> and run 25 feet away and then um i will turn and say just kidding and i'm gonna use a quicken spell to cast guiding bolt uh 26 to hit 26 very hits roll damage that's a uh, 16 radiant damage. And then for my action, I'm going to firebolt and I'm going to aim for that hay that you described sticking out. Ah, oh, that's a natural one. So that one goes wide. Wait, don't you have advantage because you just guiding bolted? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, that was a- oh, so- oh my gosh, I get my own advantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme. That's a natural 20. Oh my gosh. Oh shoot. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For 11 fire damage. Okay, so walk through these damages with me. First, uh, there was that 26 for that guiding bolt, correct? Yes. Okay, then, hey, come on now. Minus 26. <laughs> Damage. Go. Hmm, I'm having a weird HP problem. The, oh, duh. The there we go. It, I'm there we go. I did it right. I was typing minus. Okay. Uh, and, and the system was like, well, that just doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> Okay, so 26 and then, uh, or no, sorry, that was to hit. Um, the so, damage was 16 and yeah, then 11. Damage is 16. Uh, I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna keep that hit there in that roll for time's sake. Uh, and then an 11 damage. And then uh, that also, I just realized uh, your initial guiding bolt uh, didn't end up in here either. So that was an 18. And I just typed 19, but it's okay, whatever. Um, okay, awesome. So like the spider thing just like gets racked by uh, all of these uh, bolts of magic again, and it gets very angry. And like one of the legs flips up a banquet table, uh, which crashes into the Ray stage. Uh, and you just like all these like lutes and different instruments just kind of like clang on the floor, like Meow. Um, and <laughs> uh, Lisa Lith. May I lay yes. off my ready to short sword? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the qualifying event, but, uh, uh, works for me. Uh, sorry. Let me just see if I can take a little swipe at it since it is engaged with, uh, in, in, I guess it's not close up engaged with melee and it's not distracted. So it's just going to be a straight up regular short sword. I mean, it's, um, pretty dist- it's pretty distracted if you want to do that, but again, 25 hits. Your choice. I love to have a sneak attack, but that just might not be an option in an open combat in a small room with a giant scarecrow uh, spider. Um, and we got 25 to hit, so that's a good start. I like that 25 damage? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm happy for sneak attack damage if you want to use it. I mean, if, if you're going to, let's do it. Uh, it was... It's the one nice thing I'll do is your boss. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else for the rest Nothing of else. your employment. <laughs> All right, so the regular attack was, uh, I believe, eight points, and the sneak attack adds another 17, so that is 25. As I I pull out that short sword, I watch the amazing spell work of Hamill uh, and all of the Lizalists flying around, and I choose my moment to come in, go up, tearing, ideally, up the leg of uh, one of the Scarecrow monsters, because I want to just spill as much as I can of the contents uh, of the spider scare uh, grain creature before us. Amazing. So you come up with the sword as you're like ripping up and tearing, just uh, grain just starts like pouring just like directly onto your, like if this was, it's evil dead in blood, except it's this and- My next (laughs) shell, I'm never never getting, I'm never gonna get this out. Um, uh, and now our, um, uh, uh, Lisa Lith, it is your turn. Yeah, so, uh, as it just takes this big hit from Lim, uh, I'll stop flying around, so now there's, like, these four corners of Lisa Lith on brooms, uh, and I'm gonna just kind of point my wand down, and this energy starts to gather up as I say, De Elementis, Delore, and my familiar, which is a, a small little, uh, like, songbird with this kind of, like, star pattern on it, just begins to form in this, is this fiery energy, and then I bring it up and throw it down, and I'm doing a third level chromatic orb. Rolling the dice. Do it. You bet. Oh my gosh! After all that description, the orb uh, does not um, connect. Just like at the last second, actually, as a uh, limb. Is, uh, is hacking at that limb, um, the spider almost like drops off balance because one of its legs just sort of like flops to the ground uselessly and the uh, uh, the it's weird pumpkin, it's board thorax that you were uh, aiming at drops to the ground and, and the, the chromatic orb just like flashes just yeah. uh, past it and like uh, cracks into that old throne 
Uh, so, yeah. And which, which just completely falls off the stage and breaks. Um, uh, and that was going to be fire damage on that, so. Okay, so it's on fire. <laughs> uh, it, it, like, you just, like, hear all these like, cinders as this, this ancient village throne, which, oh, you know, oh, a, a oh huge no, oh no. piece of village heritage catches on fire. Um, uh, uh, would you like to I, I put away my wand, like, oh, who did that? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, is that your turn? Would you like to use a bonus? Yeah, that's it like for me. Okay, amazing. Um, and so as the uh, as this weird gourd beast uh, sort of tries to rally itself uh, so that it can defend its right to be called uh, the hero of the harvest, uh, the three of you uh, in various uh, stages of battle um, with this creature, uh, will the fates be kind to you on this next turn? Will it uh, completely uh, uh, ravage you with fey ancestry uh, or, <laughs> or uh, one of its many uh, horrible, horrible autumn themed spells that will kill you, but also probably smell like pumpkin spice? We'll find out another time. Thank you guys so, so much uh, for being surprised uh, with a little D&D, for being such great sports. Um, I, uh, I'm so just pleased uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to work with the three of you. Uh, on the daily, this, this job really is just, you know, it, it gets stressful and it gets hard. Um, at the end of the day, our job is elves. And uh, at the end of the day, our job is elves with a really great group of people. So welcome to D&D Beyond, Amy and Michael. Uh, Melly, officially, well, you were here before me, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, thank you for being a pal. Yeah, welcome, and Joe. Welcome to D&D Beyond. <laughs> I appreciate you guys so, so much. Uh, again, you're gonna, you guys are going to be seeing uh, Michael's amazing work all across the website and on camera. Uh, and Amy uh, will actually uh, be uh, hosting her first stream uh, today at noon uh, when uh, she helps me uh, create a homebrew, uh, a homebrew adventure, uh, which will be so much better uh, than this weird thing that I pulled out of my butt. Thank you guys so much for playing with me. And uh, thank you guys so much for being here and being a part of this community. Honestly, uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time here on D&D Beyond. Thanks, everybody. D&D Beyond now fits in the palm of your hand with the free D&D Beyond app. It's the perfect tool set for beginners, regular players, and seasoned dungeon masters. Play faster with the guided character creator and access your character sheets, spells, and abilities wherever you go. All of your adventures and source books are at your fingertips, even when you're offline. Easily find and access the rules you need when you need them. With more features to come, download the free D&D Beyond app today.